Well, I know you said that you've written down this list of lessons learned, and I was just wondering if you could share three of them about filmmaking and what you would pass on to someone else. And, and these are like these, this special book that you're going to hand over, and there's three, three magical uh -huh. sort of answers there. Um, well, off the top of my head, I mean, I think that, and obviously a lot of this is very specific to my experience, um, and not every film production is the same. So some of these things might automatically be solved on a different production. But I mean, I think that one of the biggest things for me was just because, look, on any films, there's never a lot of time um, in pre-production, but like we didn't have any pre-production rehearsals with the actors. We didn't even have a, a, a table read. Wow. Um, and uh, that's sort of where you kind of, in those rehearsals and the table read, you kind of, not necessarily shape the performances, but you find the characters and you also find the tone. And you really want to have that before you step on set um, because you can shape the tone with all the actors ahead of time as opposed to... Because once you're on set, not all the actors work at the same time. Um, it's just more difficult when once you're on set if you have to shape the tone of the different performances on the day of. Especially since one actor might not even start or join the production until two weeks down the road. Uh, and again, we didn't have, we didn't really have um, the, the money for it to do that. But that's one thing that I would be a, probably a little bit more insistent on budgeting for. Like, let's take money out of something else and make sure that at least have a table read. Just so all the actors can be in a room, read it, and you can kind of just sort of figure out what each person's performance is going to be like. So when you walk on set, you don't have to figure that out as you go. Because um, especially in a movie like this, that's a bit of a, a hybrid of genres. The tones are already tricky to get right. Uh, the more you can sort of solve ahead of time, the better. So that's, I'd be um, pushing a little bit more for, let's do a table read, even if it's, you know, two days before the shoot starts. Um, the other thing is a little bit more specific for the way I work um, and uh, just because I'm very or so I didn't do storyboards on, on this film because it just wasn't time uh, and that's fine but what I did was I did a shot list um, and just because I'm an editor and also uh, obsessively organized my shot list was excessive. It was 500 pages long. Oh. Yeah, and I still, I still tell myself that, and it's probably true because I heard it from other people on the crew too, it kind of saved our butts just because when things move fast, it's good to have everything planned. But um, it was just, 500 pages is a lot to manage on set. I mean, it was two huge binders. Um, and I think the next time in my prep, what I would do is, I can still do these 500 pages, but just come up with an abbreviated version of that that's ready to go so uh, when you shoot so you're not staying up all night reading a million pages trying to summarize it for the next day because you won't have time you know so um, yeah that's one that's I mean that's more like my experience ah, what those else? are two yeah just the third yeah I'm trying to think what a good one is those are two great ones though uh -huh, yeah um, well, I mean, there's, the, there's the, the fight choreography thing, just because we didn't have a lot of rehearsals. We obviously also didn't have time to teach the actors any of the, the, the action stuff ahead of time. Also something that had to happen the day of, not ideal, you know, so ideally you can have um, actors do that during pre-production too. I'm trying to think of something that's a little bit more different though. Uh, well, I mean, I talked uh, before about like the big screen and just like how, to, how you have to keep that in mind. Um, just because like during production you're seeing everything on a screen you know this big maybe even just like this small um, and even in the edit you're on an Avid you know it's, you have a monitor like that once you um, once you see it on the big screen the editing will automatically feel faster you know the, the camera shakes will automatically feel bigger so it's like when you shoot and frame your shots and when you edit that stuff together uh, just Keep in mind that it's going to be, you know, however big a screen is. Um, just plan for that. Um, what else? I'm trying to think. It's a long list. Um, oh my God. 
But there's, I mean, there's technical stuff like buy an iPad. <laughs> yeah. Next time I just need to buy, just because I had like five or six different binders, I was very much a paper person. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's on a movie set where everything moves fast. It's next time it'd be good to just be able to do that and have it all you know, in a little thing. What happened when things didn't go as planned? How are you able to just regroup? I mean, honestly, it was, it's, just, it's just prep. Um, we, we knew things were gonna go wrong, but like, I mean, I made, especially for like the, the more active, visceral stuff on set, like the action scenes, like there's, there's, like I had backup plans and then I had backup plans for the backup plan, <laughs> each one a little simpler than the one before. So when things go wrong or you run out of time, you don't have to try and figure it out on the spot, but you can just be like, all right, here's not a shot list. Let's just do this. And that happened every single day. Yeah. Were there times when the backup plan for the backup plan failed? Um, you know, I don't think we ever really had, I mean, things did go wrong. That's just Murphy's law. That's just what, you know, it will, that it just happens on movie sets. I don't think anything ever went that wrong that I ran out of backup plans and maybe that's just again because I, I I'm just kind of obsessive when it comes to preparing um, the reason why the shot list was 500 pages is because there's there's alternative shots hey if we can't do this shot do this shot you know um, I mean the, the things that went the most wrong is just when we ran out of time and couldn't do a whole scene you know but as a director at that point there's not much you can do because that's more like a production issue um, then you're just thinking, how can we fix that in post? You, you mean know? when you didn't make your day and so you had to... There's laugh? just when, when too many scenes were crammed into one day. I mean, yeah, sometimes there's... Well, I mean, it happened, I think... How many scenes did we not get? I think it was actually just one. One, maybe two. Uh, scenes that we just... Like, yeah, when... when, when and it's, it was just a scheduling issue. Like, when you... It, when an action scene is scheduled on one day, you might want to just spend the day on that. You know what I mean? It's hard to then also do a company move and get another scene in. So there was one scene with Michael O'Neill that uh, we didn't get. Yeah. But we fixed it in post with ADR. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs>